Back to the 2006 NCAA Women's College Cup here at Cary, North Carolina. The 25th anniversary celebration, our first semifinal, UCLA and North Carolina. And for more on the Tar Heel legacy, here's Rob Simulcare. All right, Beth, I'm standing here in front of the North Carolina bench. Coach Anson Dor Dorrance right behind me. And for Coach Dorrance, it is really a story of good to be back here in the College Cup. Despite having outstanding teams the last two years with a record of 42-2-3 combined over the last two years before this year, they missed the College Cup both of those years. They were picked off in the early rounds of the NCAA tournament, and that is just not like North Carolina football. He is very happy to be back. You can tell it really hurt him to miss it the last two years, and he makes it back this year on a team that did not really have a lot of people expecting them to be here. They lost 11 seniors and five starters from 05, so so they are back and glad to be back here at the College Cup. Beth? Yeah, Rob, an unexpected surprise for Tar Heel fans with all the freshmen, five starters in the lineup. Here are the rules of the match. We'll count down on the clock from 45 minutes. Can't re-enter in the first half, can check back into the game in the second half. We'll have one timeout per half. And uh, if necessary, a couple of 10-minute overtimes, golden goal. And if we still can't figure it out by then, we will go to penalty kicks. The winner moves on to play for the national championship. The Bruins in blue into a stiff wind here in the first half. The Tar Heels, the higher seed, with their home white uniforms on. Quick restart by UCLA, looking immediately for Denisha Adams, number 25 in blue. Their other big time offensive threat would be number eight in blue, Lauren Cheney. The freshman sensation last year's national high school player of the year and the top recruit coming into the college game and this is her looking to get a touch and chip it down to the North Carolina end and a rodent bow is able to secure the ball down there Tar Heels champions of the Atlantic Coast Conference 25 and 1 this season. They lost their first game of the year to Texas A&M and have rattled off 25 wins in a row. Their last avenging that defeat to A&M with a win in the quarterfinals. There is Anna Rodenbow, the sophomore out of Greensboro, took over the starting job last year and has started throughout the season for North Carolina. Even with the emergence of their highly talented redshirt freshman, Ashlyn Harris, who we may see later in the game. Ready? This is Heather O'Reilly, the U.S. Olympic gold medalist, the All-American, looking to cross it in front, cleared out by UCLA. Beth, this player here, Tobin Heath, another freshman from the University of North Carolina, just phenomenal on the ball. Great left-sided player. And the Tar Heels earn the corner kick. They have some good size to target, including 5'10", Yael Averbush, number 17, who will line up right in the middle of the box. And a great header right behind her, making a run number 76, freshman Allie Hawkins. O'Reilly will take the corner, puts it in front. Cleared out by UCLA. Carolina known for its high pressure, multifaceted attacking style of play, and they will look to keep the pressure on the Bruins. And that's over the end line for the goal kick. Wendy, let's take a look at the rest of the uh, starting lineup for North Carolina. And North Carolina will actually play in a 4-3-3 lineup, a lot of high pressure. Robin Gale's going to fill in for injured Jess Maxwell. Quarterfinal game, she broke her leg, so keep an eye on that in the back line. Three midfielders here, Yael Averbush, leading goal scorer for the UNC Tar Heels, number 17. And up top, Libby Guess, phenomenal player, a senior, teaming with Engen and O'Reilly. Libby Guess has 17 of her 32 career goals in playoff time. Known for having just the three backs and going with the three attackers. At times, it's a high risk, but very high reward type of system that the, the Tar Heels have obviously used quite well over the years. Well, the back line will be very active. And again, I can't say enough about Robin Gale, Canadian national team player, phenomenally experienced, but she's settling into the center back position. She's played there some this year, but she's really got to organize a very active back line. 
They are facing a UCLA Bruin team coming in with a 21 and three record this season and a fourth consecutive Pac-10 championship. They were the preseason number one and then lost one of the top young talents in the world in Carol Lang to an ACL injury. And then during the season, they lost their top defender, Mary Castellanelli, to a knee injury. And they have plugged up all those holes nicely and are back at the College Cup, looking to go to their third consecutive final. On the attack, Carolina scoots right across the goal mouth. Well, that's a little bit of exciting play out of Tobin Heath, number 98 on the left side for UNC. Just a freshman, played in the U-20 World Championships in Russia. Look at this quick little footwork, gets in behind. Briston Davis, a senior on the back line of UCLA. Whitney Engen just making that run, but a near miss on the ball. No, it's fine. Second corner of the match early on here for North Carolina. Averbush tried to get ahead on it. And she has called for the foul. The Bruins go with Valerie Henderson in goal, the junior from Orinda, California, a member of the U.S. Uh, U-20 national team this past summer. This is her third time in the College Cup as the starter for the Bruins. She's got a ton of experience back there. And here is a uh, look at the rest of the lineup for the Bruins. It has changed for them in every match so far in the NCAA tournament as they continue to tinker with what will work best. They'll be in a 4-4-2 for today's game. Kristen Davis, number nine, is the senior, leading two other sophomores and a freshman in her back line. In the midfield, really keep an eye on DiMartino. She is the playmaker. If she sets play, UCLA would be scoring some goals. And up top, freshman sensation Laura Cheney, number eight, combines with number 25, Denisha Adams. Those two have been unstoppable, unstoppable in tournament time. In fact, just a freshman, Cheney, has four goals and one assist, and Adams has five goals and one assist in tournament play this year. They each have a point in every NCAA tournament game, and they've combined for close to 70% of the Bruins' scoring in the NCAA tournament. We heard Rob Simulcare talk about Anson Dorrance and his exploits in his 28th season. Jillian Ellis is putting together something special in Westwood as well. A terrific run for the Bruins, four consecutive college cups for UCLA. Looking for something very special this weekend, not only the first national championship for women's soccer at UCLA, but the 100th overall team title for the UCLA Athletic Department. Nobody else is even close, but it's a, quite a special honor that is discussed amongst all the teams in the training room out in Westwood. Who will be the team to get the 100th team championship? The Bruins men's soccer team is also playing this weekend. Their men's volleyball team picked up the 99th title last spring. started back in 1950 with the men's tennis team. The first women's title came with uh, the NCAA, of course, taking over the championships in 1982. Their softball team has won 10. This is David Bush drawing a lot of attention. Gets a shot on goal, handled by Henderson. Aaron Hardy, number 12, UCLA's back line's hobbling a little bit. She was one of the two players going in on that tackle. You know those goalies like to get those early touches, get some early action and just to see where they stand. O'Reilly tackled off the ball. Catherine Calvert getting the job done. You talked about Briston Davis having to move back from her forward spot to defense. Aaron Hardy is actually the only natural defender of the four that are back there because of the injury to Castellanelli, that's forced them to move some other folks around. Very disappointing to see Castellanelli go down in her senior year. She can't redshirt, she played too many games. Very disappointing for her, and she truly is one of the best flank defenders that I've seen in the women's game. Tacks very well out of the back. Hopefully she'll have a chance to 
get some time with the national team if she gets healthy and back on her game. At the feet of Denisha As uh, Adams, the speedster, tried to cut it back inside looking for DiMartino or Cheney. Taken care of by Rodenbow. The long boot. See if North Carolina can take advantage of a brisk wind at times that will be at their back here in this first half. Whitney Engen, the freshman. There are only four seniors on the field right now for both these sides. They are very young teams. And the freshmen have come on quickly in both Chapel Hill and out at UCLA. You know, just really a testament to the growth of the game as a whole. The players are developing very nicely at a young age. And for these freshmen to step in and be impactful and really not show any nerves in a semifinal game at the College Cup is truly incredible. Rob Simulcare talked a little bit a moment ago about the unexpected success at North Carolina despite the young team. They have started at times six freshmen. They have five freshmen starting today. When we talked to Coach Dorrance earlier in the week, he said, you know, coming into the season, we thought we were going to take some hits early. And he mentioned a number that I thought might have been a little high, maybe four or five losses, because they did not know what to expect. Well, it ended up only being the one. And the freshmen have had such an impact. They sent three starters from last year to the bench and took those starting jobs. Well, it's interesting what I can say about that group of, of five players that are starting is they bring a real passion and passion and incredible enthusiasm and confidence uh, to this squad. And like I said, you know, really for both sides, it's so great to see for the game, the young players stepping up and being so impactful in their freshman seasons. And Rob Simulcare's got something to add for us. Well, talking about the youth of these teams and on the UCLA side, what makes it even more impressive is that they've had a tough season and they've had adversity and these young kids have really stepped back and battled that adversity so well. They've come back three times this year. They went down early against Florida in the third round of the tournament, battled back for a 3-2 victory, gave up an early goal in the quarterfinals to Portland before coming back. That's not something you expect from young kids necessarily, but these are obviously uh, some young ladies who are wise beyond their years and they're playing like it. Well, Rob, the, the freshman on both sides, putting some pressure on. The international experience that they get so helpful of playing with U-17s and 18s and 19s and 20s and 21s overseas. Which uh, brings us to another interesting point, Wendy. In your playing days, you may not have known anybody on the other team. Now all these kids have played with one another during club tournaments or on U.S. teams. And there's a little more familiarity with the opposition. Well, there's so many environments for them to play and get competition as they're developing as young kids. And even while they're in college, some of the players are going off to play with either youth or full national teams. So it's an amazing commitment to the game year round for these players. You've played in college cups. When did you start to feel comfortable out there that you, you were into your rhythm? You know, the, the uh, pressure or the anxieties might have worn off. I, sophomore year, um, actually. and. Um, it does. It's just an, it, for back in my day, there was just an adjustment period, and it seems like these freshmen are coming in and uh, making an impact right away. Tar Heels tried to keep it in play. Lauren Wilmoth with the throw in, taken right back by the Tar Heels. Whenever you're playing North Carolina, job number one is sustain against their pressure, and it is relentless as they pick up their fourth corner kick already of this first half. And one of the players that starts that pressure is up front. Uh, most people might not realize that the pressure starts up front with the forwards, and Heather O'Reilly is the type of player who leaves everything on the field. Washington will take the corner. Goal kick now coming up for the Bruins. Nikki Washington, a player, uh, another one of those uh, vaunted freshmen that had been going 90 minutes for the Tar Heels, but leg injuries have slowed her down. Uh, we expect that Casey Nagara will come on at some point to give her a spell in this first half. Well, she hasn't seen a full 90 minutes for some time in this season, but talk about young players and impact. In the quarterfinal game, she scored the game winner and saved a ball off the line in the last 20 or 30 seconds of the match. Tobin Heath fouled.
free kick opportunity coming up. Yael Averbush, who Coach Anson Dorn says can kick it like a mule. Tremendous power. She'll set it up right now for the Tar Heels. Bending for that back post, and Henderson handles it as Allie Hawkins was trying to run on. Yael Averbush along with Heather O'Reilly and Carrie Hanks, who we will see in the second semifinal for Notre Dame. They are the three finalists for the National Player of the Year Award, the Matt Herman Trophy. Midfield handled by Stacey Lindstrom. Tried to get it to Martino down that left side and handled nicely by Christy Eveland, freshman defender for the Tar Heels. Looking for O'Reilly up top, busted up by Aaron Hardy. Top you guys, top team. Hardy, one of those young players that has some international experience. Coach Jillian Ellis says she thinks Aaron has developed already just a sophomore into one of the top central defenders in the country. David Bush, number 17 in white, gonna switch fields. Tobin Heath, one of the top recruits in the country coming out of high school. Look at the speed and the skill from Heath. Just a little too much over the end line. She is a special player, doesn't mind taking players on 1v1. UCLA's midfield is trying to keep a close eye on her, and you can already see how many times that play has changed the point of the attack a couple times and gone through this young player, Tobin Heath. Something we expected to see from UCLA, some substitutions. This is Alma Playle who comes in for Larson. The Bruins want to keep fresh legs out there because they know they are going to be tested by the high pressure from North Carolina. Well, nobody, no other team in the country plays as high a pressure as UNC, and, and it does tire other teams out. I would say that on the season, UCLA has not actually gone that deep into their bench on a regular occasion, so this will be interesting to follow. Scoreless here in the first half. Robin Gale, the junior from Ontario, She's a member of the Canadian national team, trying to chip it into the area. Knotted on by Angen. Bruins trying to clear it out. DiMartino does so. And look at O'Reilly backtracking to take it right back for the Tar Heels. McCall Zerboni up to Adams. All three defenders between her and the goal right now. Trying to thread it through. Kristen Davis into the area. McCall just missed it wide right. Looking for the foul, does not get the call. Nicely played by UCLA. When the serve comes in, it's actually a midfielder, McCall, who, who continues her run to beat the back line of UNC. Just hits it with her left foot low to the far post, but it's about a yard wide. Well executed, very, very high level tactics on UCLA's part. Probably the UNC back line is going to expect Adams to try and be playing on the edge of that restraining line, but the way you beat it is you send a midfielder through. Actually, it looked like she was pointing down at the feet, thought that the Carolina defender deflected it over the goal line. It should have been a corner kick. Here comes some pressure now from UCLA again. And they will get the corner kick here. They're second. Good work by Christina DiMartino, known as Tina, to all the Bruin players out of Massapequa, New York, just a sophomore. Stands all of 5-2. Sister had an incredible freshman year at Boston College, yeah. Rookie of the Year, plays a front runner position, very different from Tina's style of play, but both phenomenal players. Now North Carolina will look to counter. Whitney Engen turns it back inside. Hardy slows her down. Three Bruins around her and they take it away. Here come the Bruins. DiMartino tripped up. 
Blasted up top by Ariel Harris. Wilmoth, the freshman, takes it to the outside as the sun breaks through the clouds. We had some pretty significant rain earlier in the day. But uh, the field is in fantastic condition here at Sass Soccer Park, has handled the water well. And it appears that for the rest of the day, the only issue would be the wind in it. It is a stiff consideration at this point. Scoreless in this first half of play, North Carolina looking for an 18th NCAA title. UCLA Bruins looking for their first ever. There are the flags, and you can see how significant the wind is. It may not be quite that bad down in the in on the field, but still an issue for the players to contend with. for the Bruins who are not only trying to play into it but run into it as well here in this first half. Heath tried to cut it to the outside and a dangerous spot right here for a free kick and we will have a yellow card as well issued to Briston Davis for the takedown. The senior from Locust Valley, New York. Look at Tobin Heath again with her flair, loving taking players on. She gets taken down there. You see she's so frustrated. She didn't want to go down but let's not forget what she has created for her team here. You have Yael Averbush who's the leading goal scorer for the UNC Tar Heels behind this ball. And she can hit these anywhere 40 and in. UCLA is in danger. Led the team this season with 16 goals scored. Aver Bush will try and bend it around and just over the top of the crossbar. Some good opportunities for North Carolina here in the first half, although Aver Bush could not put that on the frame. Darnells will get it right back as UCLA tries to clear it out of there. With Anson Dorrance looking on, the ACC's coach of the year. He used to coach the uh, Carolina men as well, as well as the women when he first started out almost three decades ago. And when you combine the numbers of both teams, he is looking for his 800th career win as a collegiate coach here today. Of course, as his characteristic with Anson, when we spoke to him yesterday, he really downplayed that and didn't want to make a big deal of it, but it is an amazing statistic. In fact, 628 of those wins, if he gets the win today, have come on the women's side. And just tremendous in the NCAA tournament. The Tar Heels record over the last 25 years is 90 wins and seven losses. That's it. Davis has it ricochet off heat. Kristen gives it another whack. Harris will play it back to Rodenbo. Wilmoth tried to get it down the flank to DiMartino, a throw in for Carolina. Scoreless as we approach the midway point of this first half. The 2006 NCAA Women's College Cup, the winner advances to the national championship game to take on the winner of our second semifinal, the undefeated Fighting Irish of Notre Dame and the Florida State Seminoles. Onside is DiMartino, but Nikki Washington got there first. We will take a timeout right here. North Carolina, a chance across the goal mouth in the first half. The Bruins had a good look as well. We remain scoreless at the College Cup. Welcome back to the College Cup. Anson Dorrance has coached 
43 U.S. national team members over the course of his career. One of them is standing right by with Rob Simulcare. All right, Beth, someone who knows a little bit about playing in the Women's College Cup, Mia Hamm, and also uh, someone who's been named to the 25th anniversary NCAA team. What's that mean to you to be named to that uh, very special group? It is a very special honor, and I think uh, first and foremost, the company that I'm in, obviously very proud of the fellow Tar Heels, but also, you know, players like uh, Christine St. Clair, Daniel Fotopoulos, uh, Lisa Gmitter. Um, it's just fun because it talks about the history of the game, and, and I know for us at Carolina, that was extremely important, and it's, known, it's so nice to celebrate with the rest of these players. Your alma mater back in the uh, College Cup for the first time in a few years. What's your take early on on how they're performing? Um, I think it's been a great game so far. I, I think the teams came out a little bit nervous, but that's understandable. I mean, uh, this is a huge game, and, and this is probably one of the harder ones. You, you want to get to that final so badly, so uh, you're pretty tentative on offense, don't want to make too many mistakes and be really sure on defense. But I think after this timeout, both teams will settle down and come out and put on a show for this uh, wonderful crowd that showed up. All right, thanks a lot for coming up saying hello. Thank you. Beth, back to you. Thank you, Rob, and thank you to uh, Mia Hamm. Always great to see her back here at the College Cup, but a member of that 25th anniversary team. And Wendy, let's uh, take a closer look at that last uh, attempt by UCLA. Well, we talked about how tactical it was. The ball's going to go out here, and if you keep an eye on this player here, she's going to make the run in when she turns. And, and actually, that's a midfielder player coming through. I'm sorry, it was this run here, McCall Cerboni. She beats the defense, and I'll tell you, she, she'd like to have that shot back because she was in with some pressure on her back, but just hit it low and wide. The best scoring chance of the day for UCLA. Carolina has had a couple as well. Mia mentioned a couple of the other members of that uh, 25th anniversary team. That also includes April Heinrichs, Christine Lilly, Kat Reddick, Tisha Venturini, Carla Overbeck, Jen Ranola, and Allie Wagner. All of them winners of the national championship over the course of the last 25 seasons. I know it's tough because everybody will critique the team and say somebody's been left out. But there's no question that Michelle Akers should have been on that team. Well, when we asked Anson Dorrance about that, he said, I, I think everybody on the team has won a title. He gets to coach this team, by the way. And he said, I want to make sure that I can bring Akers in off the bench. And we'll take on anyone at any time, including men's teams. And I think they'd have a shot at just about anyone at any time. Henderson able to grab it and keep things out of trouble. She had Casey Nagara bearing down on her. Henderson, a part of the defense for UCLA, that their last two seasons in trips to the national championship final, they only gave up one goal in the run of play until that championship final loss against Portland. They were so dominant defensively the last two seasons. Now here they are at the offensive end. The throw in from Lindstrom. That's a weapon, puts it right on the six. Adams has a chance through the legs of the defender. And uh, a whistle from the official Rachel Wu. I believe there was a handball prior to that. So a goal kick coming up here for North Carolina. First half action at the College Cup. Semi-final number one, scoreless between North Carolina in the white jerseys and UCLA in blue. Venetia Adams flicked it on with her heel and it's taken away by Eveland. Christy Eveland, the freshman from South Lake, Texas, up to the senior now, Heather O'Reilly. Holds, waits for more Tar Heels to arrive. And then her cross is Cleared out of there by Calvert. Tar Heels not done yet. Ava Bush. Good pass out to Washington. Nikki Washington trying to work on Wilmoth. Goal kick UCLA. The Bruins coming off an emotional win in the quarterfinals last weekend at home. They knocked off the defending national champions, the Portland Pilots, the team that beat them in the final last year. And when we talked to the players yesterday, Wendy, about that loss, how disappointing and how embarrassing it was, it was the word that some of them used, 
They bounced back quickly from that. Uh, just wide on the attempt from Nagara for North Carolina. Well, seeing some of Nagara's flair there, she can in strike the ball. You see she gets defender on her back, little change of pace there and just rips it. Just taps the post there, almost tucks it in the low corner. Just a freshman. Play. Wilmoth back. Hardy trying to track it down, and Nagara blasts that one out of play. Here's that last attempt by the Tar Heels, and it was close. And there's Casey Nagara, just a freshman, showing some of her flair. Low, far post. No spin on the ball, just hits it a little bit wide. Beautiful opportunity. Anson Dorrance, very complimentary of Nagara, says she is as skillful as they come at her age read somewhere that she's compared to she's been compared to Ronaldinho Adams trying to utilize that speed to get by Evelyn who bumps her out wide Bruins have some numbers in the area Adams looking for Cheney he can't quite get to it thus far North Carolina has been able to keep Cheney and Adams quiet offensively as coach Ellis looks on she has done a tremendous job. When it comes time for the postseason, they are just able to crank it up and they play their best soccer at the end of the year. All that is really left for this program is to win that first national championship. But she's very confident that that will come one day. Looks like we might have some blood that has to be taken care of on uh, Stacy Lindstrom. Just one of two seniors that started for this UCLA side. Yep, you can see it right there on the nose after that last collision. Bruins will send out Michelle Gleason, a senior from Lake Forest, California, to take her spot. Re-entry rules in college soccer. Once you are substituted for in the first half, you cannot return unless it is in the event of an injury. Some of the keys that you've been watching so far in this first half, Wendy. Well, possession is a big one. Uh, possession is always important to the UNC Tar Heels and as well an emphasis for UCLA. I'm gonna come back to this in one second here. We've been tracking the possession and, and it's even so far. Uh, both what we're tracking is uh, three consecutive passes for each side and both have six and really what is also factoring in and I think it's going to be a huge part of either team's success is how often during that possession they change the point of the attack and in fact UCLA has four four times they've changed the point of the attack successfully with three consecutive passes in UN, to UNC's three so Yael Averbush needs to get more involved for UNC that's where they're very successful when they change the point through her. Great footwork from Tobin Heath and then tried to find O'Reilly. Tremendous skill displayed from Heath, one of the top recruits in the nation. 16 newcomers to the roster, including 10 freshmen, five of them in the starting lineup. They bonded early, actually in the preseason, by all sleeping in the McCaskill Soccer Center. Brought the mattresses in, put them right on the floor over there at the, they call it the castle in Chapel Hill. They are a very tight-knit group. That was funny to see. And they didn't have to do that, but that's the way they chose to spend their preseason. They didn't have to clean up their rooms. <laughs> they were loving that. They've also uh, drawn some special inspiration from one of their uh, their favorite fans uh, this year, a, a young girl that they have kind of adopted as one of their own. Rob Simulcare has her story. That's right, Beth. Well, Kelly Muldoon is down here right in the front row of the Carolina fans, and uh, she has really been an inspiration to this Carolina team. She first was connected to the team through Robin Confer, a former player here at North Carolina, one of the top players uh, of her time here with the Tar Heels, and uh, she, she is 
uh, struggling. She has terminal cancer and uh, is, uh, as you can see, about to, to head inside, actually. I was talking to her father, Steve, and he was just telling me how much it has meant to her and to, to, uh, to the family to have the kind of connection that they've had to this North Carolina team. The entire team has adopted her. They talk to her regularly, and they actually wear wristbands uh, talking about her and, 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 and use her for inspiration. So she's very close to the team and is having a great time. I talked to her a little bit before the game. She's very excited to be here, guys. O'Reilly tripped up just outside of the box. Kelly Muldoon's gonna like this. And there you see uh, the players uh, wearing the wristbands that uh, sport her name. And uh, some of them have the words fight written on their wristbands. Uh, they have a free kick coming up right here outside of the area. Kelly Muldoon definitely on their minds here at the College Cup. Averbush again will take the free kick. A wall of two for the Bruins. Neighbor Bush, far post, knotted out of there. I believe Adams got a head on it. It'll be a corner kick on the other side for North Carolina. Well, to add to the story about Kelly Muldoon, you know, really to summarize uh, what the players felt, they, they felt like they wanted Kelly to live the dream that they've already been able to live themselves. So, such a special story. O'Reilly will take the corner. Cleared out once again by UCLA. Gale plays it back to O'Reilly. Nagara has a chance to redirect in front, missed it just wide right. <laughs> Nagara with another good chance on the pretty feed from O'Reilly. More UCLA substitutions, by the way. Lindstrom has re-entered, and uh, Brittany Scannell has come on as well. Once again, part of their strategy to keep some fresh legs on the field against the relentless Carolina pressure. Adams trying to knife her way through. One of the things that Coach Ellis has mentioned about Adams as she has continued to grow. She burst onto the scene her freshman year, and she says she's become much more mature, much more consistent for them this season. And playing very well, obviously, alongside Cheney up top. One of the things that I think really helps her is Cheney takes a lot of pressure off of her, first of all. Um, everybody's focusing on, focusing on Denisha Adams, but she's also playing more of an attacking role as a front runner. Aver Bush with the left, deflected, a corner kick coming up for the Tar Heels. If you remember last year against Portland, she was back in the midfield. And one thing I'll tell you about Denisha Adams is she needed to work on her defensive game, and she's worked on that a bit, but it helps her to have her up high. And so her, her best strengths are going to come out, and that is her, her attacking ability and her speed to get in behind defenses. Fifth corner kick here for North Carolina. Nagara will take this one. Once again, Hawkins and Averbush appear to be the prime targets. This one's low. And UCLA able to take it out of danger. DiMartino blasted out to midfield. Carolina defensive line. Sterling Smith has come on up top, replacing Heather O'Reilly here in this first half. Heather can come back in the second half of play as Cheney is fouled. There is Heather O'Reilly taking a break, done for the first half here today. Sterling Smith out there now means that there would be six Tar Heel freshmen on the field. Briston Davis, not it on by Adams, far post, DiMartino making a run on it. Could not get it on frame. Defended there by Nikki Washington. 
Dee Martinez, one of these players that's going to sneak into the unsuspected areas. And Nikki Washington had a great focus to track all the way back, put pressure on her to keep her from getting a clean shot off on that back post. A couple of shots in this first half for UCLA, none of them on target yet. The previous one from Zerboni just skidded wide. Good fight there by Martino. Scrappy player from the New York City area. Her dad and her older brother, firefighters in New York. She's got a few younger sisters that play soccer. Jillian Ellis already told us, remember the name of Rosie DiMartino. She could be the best of the bunch, the youngster in the family. Just 10 years old. Being able to chase her older sisters around. Tina played with the US U-20s. Uh, all the players on that squad missed probably four or five games early in the season before rejoining their college teams. In fact, both of these ta teams taking early losses without those players. And that one bounces all the way into the side netting. Goal kick coming up for North Carolina. One of the unique qualities of collegiate soccer, I think the only sport I can think of where you actually lose players during the season to go play with the national team. What was that experience like for you, Wendy, not only as a player that would leave, but also a player that was left behind and how you had to kind of fill in while they were gone? Well, uh, the U.S. team typically got together during holiday breaks and we would go on tour for you know, three weeks, a month at a time. And so that didn't affect the play during the season. However, we did lose uh, my roommate, Bjerta Hegstad, who captained the, the Norwegian national team. And in fact, is who we beat in the 91 World Cup two to one. She captained that team. And so we would lose her a lot during the season. And it's tough to pick up those pieces when those players aren't there because they're so important to your squad. In fact, just in the last few weeks, Adams, Robin Gale, and Heather O'Reilly have all gone away to play for the U.S. and Canadian national teams. Gale, as a matter of fact, uh, last weekend played 90 minutes in the Texas A&M win for North Carolina and then played 120 minutes in Canada's loss to the United States. The couple of red eye flights getting her back. It's, it really is incredible. You know, if you look at Heather O'Reilly, both on and off the field, she's committing to two teams and also committing to her academics in the classroom. She's an education major. She just won the ESPN, the magazine Academic Player of the Year award and holds a 3.4 cumulative GPA. Just a great story for those young kids out there to know that you can do it all. You just have to be incredibly wise with your time management. She wants to be a teacher, just like her mother. She is watching right now. Fully expect to see her back in the second half of a scoreless tie thus far. Six and a half minutes to go before the intermission. Semi-final number one. The winner advances to the championship on Sunday afternoon against either Notre Dame or Florida State. The Fighting Irish have the top two scorers in the nation this year, including Kerry Hanks, who leads the country in goals and assists. And as far as we can tell, only one other player has ever done that. And she was with Rob Simulcare earlier, and that would be Mia Hamm, and that would be tremendous company for Kerry Hanks to join. She's with Notre Dame coming up in the second semifinal. And doing all that in just her sophomore year. UCLA. DiMartino thought that Cheney was going to make a run. Cheney has been quiet thus far in the first half in stark contrast to what she has done so far in the NCAA tournament. She's scored in every match that UCLA has won on its run to the College Cup. And she set a UCLA freshman scoring record with 19 goals this season. Broke the record that Kara Lang set last year. Lang injured in the offseason, not playing this year for UCLA. Averbush tried to launch one on goal. 
You can see a sitting room only crowd behind the, the goal there, expecting a sold out crowd of close to 10,000 here at SAS Soccer Park for the College Cup. DiMartino departs for UCLA. As does Denisha Adams. So Jill Ellis will try and buy them a few extra minutes to rest up here leading into halftime. Zerboni. Her twin sister Blake also plays for the Bruins and she has just checked into the lineup along with Molly Kruger. Nikki Washington will also head to the Carolina bench now as Katie Brooks comes on. side, Heath. Brooks. That pass knocked down by Hardy. Taken away by Blake Zerboni. Tar Heel throw in. Flip down by Smith, UCLA controlling. Evelyn, look at the burst of speed by Evelyn to beat everybody back to the ball. Just a freshman defender for the UNC Tar Heels and has really become their, one of their most valuable defenders. You could see one of the reasons why recovering, she was a couple steps behind, and as you said, that, that burst of speed allowed her to make that play. Anson Dorrance said the other day that she is having the best freshman performance for a defender that he has ever had at North Carolina. You think about some of the freshmen that started for him over the years, including Olympians Carl Overbeck and Kat Reddick and Stacy Wilson. An amazing uh, group of group of defenders that she is being compared against. And uh, she comes from a very athletic background. Her father played football at Vanderbilt and her sister currently plays collegiate basketball out on the West Coast. So uh, she knows what it's like to compete. Obviously has tremendous potential. Just the freshman back there, Christy Eveland from Texas. Under two minutes to go here in the first half. No stoppage time added on in college soccer. You can see one of the things there, Cheney working a little magic with her back to pressure. She settles the ball down so nicely and really provides a lot of calm here, Anson Dorrance. Again, that statistic we mentioned at the top of the show, 28 losses in 28 seasons, an average of only one loss per season. It's phenomenal. They have won those 17 NCAA titles, 11 of those. He had unbeaten teams that won the championship, including one of his best ever back in 2003, the last time they won the championship. <laughs> Eveland again, able to get back to it. That's a little more trivia for you. Many people won't real believe this, but it, they go back 525 games without having lost by more than one goal. That goes back to the 85 final, my freshman year, 1985, Ooh. since they've lost by more than one goal. That uh, accounts for 48,000 plus minutes of soccer. That is phenomenal. UCLA looking to strike late. So you were on that team then, Wendy, that gave that lost by more than one goal. Is that what you're telling us? Oh, absolutely. 2-0. <laughs> and let me tell you, I was on that field and had a golden chance right on the goal line. 
<laughs> and um, I, I had a chance to make a difference as a freshman, and I wasn't playing with the confidence that these freshmen are playing with. It's amazing how they've incorporated into these teams. Otherwise, the streak could be much longer at, at this point. As we watch the final seconds tick off, Heather O'Reilly and the Tar Heels scoreless in the first half against UCLA. Her parents are standing by right now with Rob Simulcare. All right, Pat, here with a very nervous uh, parent section at North Carolina and the parents of Heather O'Reilly, uh, Andrew and Carol O'Reilly. So first of all, so far, what's your take? It's been a pretty tight one. Very tight, very tight, uh, very even game. What I expected, it's going to come down to survival at the last 10 minutes of the game. And we hope the North Carolina team is there. So, All right, now your daughter has done just about anything you could want a daughter to do as an athlete. She's obviously been a phenomenal athlete here at North Carolina and for the U.S. national team and an ESPN, the magazine, academic All-American. What can you say as a mother? Well, we're just flabbergasted, and, and we're thrilled that she's here, and we can't believe that she's accomplished what she's done. It's and she fun. wants to be a middle school teacher after she's yes. done, which is following in your footsteps. How does that make you feel? Well, I, I said to her, are you crazy, Heather? <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you both very much. Enjoy the second half. Beth? Thank you. Thank you very much, Rob. An opportunity for the Tar Heels scoots across the goal mouth. Best chance for UCLA misses just wide. An entertaining first half at the 2006 Women's College Cup. Scoreless, the Tar Heels and the Bruins. Let's go to Mike Hall with SportsCenter U. As uh, we have seen throughout this NCAA tournament, North Carolina will make a switch in goal. And Ashlyn Harris, who has played in just four matches her career, she was hurt last year, came back from the injury to start playing again just a couple of weeks ago at the start of this NCAA tournament. She has played in their previous four matches, and she replaces Rodenbaugh in goal. Tremendously vocal and a good organizer in the back. Doesn't have a lot of college experience, but has a ton of international experience. Widely regarded as the offside flag goes up to be one of the top young keepers in the country. In fact, she just found out, I believe in the last couple days, that she's been invited into the full national team training camp in the spring. Let's uh, check back in with uh, Rob. Well, Beth, just spoke to Anson Dorrance, North Carolina head coach, about what he thought of the first half. He said, you know, they need to be a little bit more aggressive up front. Their, their forwards just need to be a little bit more active in the goal mouth. He felt that they had the better of it in the first half, obviously possessed the ball very well, but wants to see them be more aggressive, try to get more one-on-one -on -one opportunities in the box and try to create and just be more aggressive creating up front. Thank you, Rob. The other subtle change that we should mention, now UCLA will have the wind at its back, and Carolina will be working against it. Tar Heels in white, Bruins in blue. The winner advancing to the championship on Sunday afternoon against either Notre Dame or Florida State. No other changes to the lineup for the Tar Heels other than the one we mentioned in goal. Uh, for UCLA, they will go with the same starting unit. The difference in the substitution in the second half is that you can uh, sub out once and re-enter the game now in the second half for the field players. This is O'Reilly. She's got a couple of defenders keeping a close eye on her, looking for Whitney Engen. Lindstrom is there to break it up. Denisha Adams trying to run on. Harris way out of the goal and beats Adams to it. Now that's going to be one of the key differences between Ashlyn Harris and Anna Rodenball. Rodenball would be more um, 
less aggressive at coming out and less confident coming out in a foot race against Denisha Adams. And there you saw a great example of the confidence that comes with Ashlyn Harris. Otherwise, Adams would have gotten to it and it could have been a 1v1 situation. Look at Jess Maxwell here. Here's That's the uh, center back that we referred to. Broke her leg in the quarterfinal match. And again, keeping an eye on the play of Robin Gale, who's filling in big shoes to fill in for Jess Maxwell. Robin Gale thus far with Evelyn and Ashlyn Harris doing a good job containing this UCLA front line. That has caused uh, the change in uh, North Carolina defensively. We talked about Mary Castellanelli for the UCLA Bruins. She went out with the injury back in September. That allowed UCLA at least a little more time to deal with it, but it was a devastating blow nonetheless early in the year for UCLA as Castellanelli was a four-year starter in back for the Bruins. And again, very disappointing for her to go out without the ability to have a medical red shirt in her senior year. Briston Davis thus picking up the senior leadership of the very young back line, and she's surrounded by Lauren Wilmoth, a freshman, Aaron Hardy, a sophomore, and Katherine Calvert, a sophomore. And you really have to tip your hat to Davis, who is a natural attacker and had to play defense last year and was hoping and expecting to play a more offensive role this season, but took one for the team and did what was best for the Bruins and moved back to a defensive position and has helped them get to the College Cup. Washington looking to feed it in front. Throw in coming here for Eveland. Ava Bush multitasking as she <laughs> fixes the ponytail and finds a teammate. <laughs> Under pressure here, Chris Eveland, handle this. Henderson comes out and gets there ahead of O'Reilly. Heather O'Reilly hoping this is not her final appearance in a North Carolina uniform. Was a part of the national championship team. Her freshman season had an unbelievable NCAA tournament, snapping Mia Ham's record by scoring eight goals in the NCAA is a new North Carolina record. And then had to watch the last two seasons as the Tar Heels did not make it back here. And she told us yesterday, very frustrating, very disappointing to be a spectator. And excited to have one more opportunity to win a second national championship. Again, we can't point out enough that UCLA is the more experienced of the two teams in the College Cup, whereas the more experienced program, of course, is UNC with its long-lasting dynasty. Taken away by UCLA. Don't forget to catch the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championships. A regional action on ESPNU. Coverage of all four regional matches begins at 4 o'clock Eastern on December 9th. And the ESPN family of networks will have the Women's Volleyball Championships in a couple of weeks. Sold out Quest Center out in Omaha. There is Castellanelli, we talked about earlier, out with the injury. Her career coming to a close. Hoping to cheer on her teammates, though, and get that elusive national championship. This is their fifth time here at the College Cup. McGarrett looking for O'Reilly. Heather O'Reilly with a burst. Here comes the All-American and Olympic gold medalist. And she earns the corner kick. Nope, they're going to say it was a goal kick. Look at this beautiful touch, trying to get in behind number 12, Aaron Hardy, who does a phenomenal job of slowing her down. Again, as a front runner, this is a lesson to all those watching. First thing you want to do with your touch is try and get the defender on your back. They're either going to have to foul you to stop you, which would result in a penalty kick, or you're going to get in. Aaron Hardy playing with what Jill Ellis calls a quiet consistency for her team. And as we've mentioned, the only natural defender back there. And she has so far 
held O'Reilly at bay. Heather without a shot to this point in the match. Most of the activity has come out of that Carolina midfield. Nagara. She'll launch with the right, misses wide. Interesting to see her get a start in the second half. Tells me that Libby Guess is, senior Libby Guess is uh, struggling with her knee that she tweaked a little bit in the last game in the quarterfinals. How about that? 25 years of this tournament, the Tar Heels have been to the College Cup 23 times. They have won 17 of the 24 titles. Five other schools have shared the remaining championships. Here comes a goal kick once again for UCLA. The Bruins, very resilient. We've talked about they are back yet again, and history has shown that if you keep knocking on that door, eventually you're going to find some success. Santa Clara was at the College Cup seven times before they won their first championship, and Portland was here six times before they broke through to win their first title. So the West Coast has really had to work, but it's paid off. Actually, Jillian Ellis has developed a friendship out in California with uh, Santa Clara's head coach, Jerry Smith. And actually, they talked about that a few years ago, and she said, the one thing she respects about that Santa Clara program is how consistent they are. And here comes Tanisha Adams behind the defense. And it's blocked in front by Harris. Best scoring chance of the day denied by the newcomer in goal. Boy, Wendy, you could almost count on her to get at least one of those opportunities a game. And it was turned away by the young keeper. And that's again, it just really illustrates the strength of Ashlyn Harris coming out, like you said, Beth, getting a touch on the ball. We've been tracking Denisha Adams all day long. There's Cheney finding her. Denisha Adams gets in behind Eveland, trying to lift it there and just cannot beat Ashlyn Harris. Phenomenal coverage of that near post. Her first shot. It was almost a doozy for UCLA. Scoreless here about 10 minutes into this second half. National semifinals. Uh, Bruin player, that's Cheney, had the wind knocked out of her. And those are Denisha Adams' numbers. 15 goals over the course of her career in the NCAA tournament. Teaming up with Cheney for a little thunder and lightning this year. They're looking for Adams again. Harris was there defensively. Definitely seeing a flurry here by UCLA. They're having some great success in the midfield, playmaking out of that spot to spring their front runners. under some pressure now from UCLA. We've been tracking that possession statistic and it's pretty unbalanced right now. There's five times UCLA has strung together three or more passes, two times changing the point of the attack. In my opinion, that's what's giving them their opportunities. Engen looking for O'Reilly. Let's check in with Rob Simulcare again. All right, Beth. Well, big play there by Ashlyn Harris, the North Carolina goalkeeper, and that has got to feel so good for her. She was not supposed to be playing again this season. Here's a chance. Averbush, Henderson pushes it away. Corner kick coming up for Carolina. Looks like Val Henderson was upset with herself for not holding on to that ball, but let me tell you, when Averbush is behind that shot, be proud of yourself for making the save. Well done. We'll get back to Rob in just a moment. Corner kick opportunity coming up. Here's Aver Bush. Give her half a step. She just takes one touch, and that, that's in the back of the net if Val Henderson doesn't get her hand on it. 
all the coaches here at the College Cup talking about the importance of set pieces that could decide it. Here's one for Carolina, O'Reilly's corner kick. Not a good one. Let's get back to Rob problem, Simulcare. No problem. All right, well, we're talking about Ashlyn Harris and that big save she made before the last save by UCLA, but she tore her ACL in the preseason and was just not expected to be a factor at all on this team this year. We spoke to her yesterday, and she said it was the hardest period of her life. She was having a hard time just walking, had to relearn how to walk, let alone play rehab every day in addition to taking classes things like that and she is an intense young lady who wanted this more than anything this is now she's now been back for i believe her fifth game here and it, it takes a strong personality to do what she did come back from that injury and be back playing on the field in the college cup the same year she got that injury tremendous comeback story and in fact rob let's hear uh, from ashlyn in her own words about that comeback well it's uh it's been a long road i mean it, it definitely Hasn't been easy whatsoever. I, I'm, I'm not gonna lie about it. There's been a lot of tears, a lot of pain, a lot of sweat. But um, just the overall support of my teammates, my family, my friends have, have really gotten me through it. I mean, I've had days where I, I didn't want to keep going. I just I didn't think I could do it. I mean, doing it, tearing my ACL twice. It's it's been tough. But I mean, my parents have been motivating me. My teammates just get back. We need you. And. And that's what I've done. I've worked hard. I've, I've done my rehab. I've done the things necessary, and I'm back. And all the hard work is worth it now, and, and I'm excited to be here. And Wendy, that's paid off for the Tar Heels. She was involved with a couple of critical plays with Denisha Adams already in this second half. Coming up with two key saves. Here is Adams trying to find DiMartino. Evelyn able to track back with her. Tease the second game a little bit. We have a great story on Allie Mims, the 60-year goalkeeper for Florida State, who also has come back from, we talk about some an unbelievable road to recovery, some 20-plus surgeries yep. after a broken leg. And she has led her team to the College Cup back-to-back -back seasons, just a phenomenal story. She missed a couple of years. And will not only graduate with her degree, but also her MBA, and she's hoping she'll leave Tallahassee with a national championship as well, looking to make some history. The Seminoles have never won it. They will take on the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame, who are looking to win their second in the last three years. And Mims could be busy against the highest powered attack in the country, Notre Dame. Before that, though, we've got some time to deal with here in our first semifinal. Beth Bowens, Wendy Gabauer Palladino, and Rob Simulcare here at SAS Soccer Park in Cary, North Carolina for the 2006 Women's College Cup. Four years in a row now that UCLA has been here. They are looking for their first national championship. Nagara tried to redirect it off course. Missed opportunity there for North Carolina. The Tar Heels seeking their 18th NCAA title first since 2003. Feeding it across and nobody on the penalty spot to receive. UCLA trying to counter. Adams at midfield. She's got Zerboni off to her left. Trying to chip it over to her. Not it down by Evelyn. Well, so far this second half, we've seen Denisha Adams get involved, but Heather O'Reilly for UNC is still very quiet. Harris with the boot. See how that one got caught up in the wind. Barely made it across midfield. A collision. And we'll have a stoppage here in our second yellow card distributed. That will go against the big defender, Stacy Lidstrom, uh, the fifth year senior out of Laguna Niguel in Southern California. Here's a look at it, Lindstrom with a, you would call that a face mask in football. She hauled down Whitney Engen. So a couple of yellow cards issued to the Bruins and a substitution for North Carolina as Libby Guess has come back on up top, replacing Casey Nagara. As she awaits actually her entrance. 
Kristen Davis blasts that one clear. And here will come Libby Guess. Perhaps the spark that Anson Dorrance is looking for, 17 of her 32 career goals have come in the postseason for the Tar Heels. And Libby Guess has a goal in three of their four NCAA tournament games this season. She was their MVP of the ACC tournament this year because of her late game heroics, including the game winning goal in overtime against Florida State in a classic ACC final. Well, she compliments Heather O'Reilly and Whitney Engen very well because she's got incredible tactical awareness and finding players. Cheney looking for DiMartino. Yeah, the offside flag was up. We have seen the Bruins get the ball on the foot of Adams. Let's see if they can work Cheney into the mix as well. They've scored nine goals combined in the postseason. They've had three chances today. Off the free kick to the edge of the area. Nice spin to clear it out by Zerboni. Washington will inbound it for the Tar Heels. Scoreless. Almost 27 minutes remaining in regulation. Averbush launches with the left into the crowd. Well, you can tell anytime she, the ball comes near USCLA, at least has one player on her, and Stacey Lindstrom's doing a good job of providing that pressure, keeping Yael from getting her shot off. Substitution now for UCLA as Christina Larson will return, replacing Scannell. see where they choose to put Larson if she's going to go up top and make it a threesome there or if they'll insert her in the midfield well the way DiMartino and Larson probably in th at this point will play is more of a supporting role but very close to that front line so when they do get on attack it does look a lot like a three front yeah. committing that extra player up top Larson does go in in that midfield over behind Adams on the right side, involved in that last encounter. Tar Heels try the give and go, and O'Reilly a little too much on it. Nine to five, the tally. Six of those shots coming from Averbush, so she is out shooting. UCLA right now. Well, as we're tracking the possession statistic, it's now even back up. Both teams in this second half have had five consecutive three, three consecutive passes five times. UCLA, however, has changed the point of the attack one additional time over UNC. They've done it twice. UNC has done it once. So we're seeing a little bit of the, the change there. It comes through that player, Averbush, in a lot of cases for UNC. UNC seems to be weathering UCLA's uh, threat here. Bruins will try once again to throw in into the area. Adams try to play it across. DiMartino looking to keep it alive. Engen clears it. Lindstrom plays it back in. Zerboni going to switch it up. Nicely done over to Wilmoth. The defender pushing forward. She plays it across. Adams redirects off the head. The Bruins putting together a nice attack there. Michelle Gleason will come back on for UCLA once again. You can re-enter once in the second half, so these players that are leaving can come back out. Both the UCLA men and women playing at the College Cups this weekend, although the men's has been postponed today due to the inclement weather out in St. Louis. So either the men's or the women's soccer team, both of them have a chance to win that 100th NCAA championship in UCLA athletics history, the most of any program in the country. They stand at 99 right now. Yeah. 
unusual that both a men's and women's program would be vying for that in the same weekend, but the men's championship has coincides this year for the first time with the women's. O'Reilly looking for the effort. That is her first shot of the match. As we get down to the nitty gritty here, we, we talked about the thunder and lightning of UCLA and the goal scoring that they look to late in a match will be from Cheney or Adams. For the Tar Heels, it's Yael Averbush who has six game winning goals this year to lead the way for North Carolina. But I gotta believe too, Wendy, that whenever Heather O'Reilly is out there, they're gonna be looking to number 20 to come up with a big play late in the match. Well, she really needs to find a way to touch the ball more, Best. She's been very quiet in, in general in the entire game and not a whole lot of time left in her college career. The best advice I could give a front runner that's struggling is that they need to just start working really hard defensively up top and the offense will come. Cheney. Four defenders around her as the freshman All-American continues to draw a lot of attention. Here is O'Reilly. Another ball over the top. We've seen quite a bit of that here from both sides in our semifinal. And we should add not with much success as both defenses have been very staunch. Oh, O'Reilly on the ball. Has some help. Chance here for the Tar Heels. Back to O'Reilly in front. The shot. Henderson got a piece of it and put it over the top. Great chance for North Carolina, and they could have another one here on the corner. Val Henderson is coming up big. She's made two goal-saving saves in this half. Most recent on Heather O'Reilly, and then earlier in the half on Yael Averbush. Terrific feed from Libby Guess, who we talked about just checking into the game and working very well up top. The two seniors trying to combine. And now O'Reilly will depart, and Nagara will come on to take the corner kick. Heather can re-enter here in the second half. Seventh corner kick of the match for North Carolina. This one swinging in towards the near post and Henderson grabs on. Anson Dorrance and his assistant coach over there, Bill Palladino, hoping that that would have been the, the one to get through. Beth, I'm not a big fan of that type of serve, and my opinion is it was probably a mistake. You've got to pull that ball out for it to be dangerous. We've got a timeout here in the national semifinals at the 2006 NCAA Women's College Cup. Scoreless North Carolina and the Bruins of UCLA. Hi, I'm Heather O'Reilly from the University of North Carolina, and you're watching the 2006 Women's College Cup. And that's the trophy that Heather wants to take home. For more on O'Reilly, here's Rob Simulcare. Well, Beth, you know, sometimes when you get something when you're young, you think you're going to get it every year, where Heather, Heather O'Reilly, of course, made it to this College Cup her freshman year, won a national championship that year, and, you know, she thought she'd be back every year. This, of course, is North Carolina soccer. They're used to being here, and she said, oh, I expect to be doing this once a year. Well, of course, the last two years, those disappointing losses, and talking to her yesterday, it means an awful lot to her to be back here for her senior year. She says, get to the Final Four. This is what Carolina does. We get to the final four and it was humbling for her those last two years but now she is so happy to be back and of course a member of the u.s women's national team as well so ending her college career and going on to 2007 in china thank you very much rob she is out right now and during the timeout ucla also subbed out denisha adams so both coaches resting a, a couple of their top scoring threats for the final push here as we have 20 minutes now to go in the second half. Carolina able to clear it out of the area. Offside flag was up against UCLA. Fifth time the flag's gone up against the Bruins. North Carolina has not been offside yet tonight. 
scoreless. Under 20 minutes to go here at the national semifinals of the College Cup. The winner moves on to Sunday's championship against either Notre Dame or Florida State. That matchup follows as the Big East meets the ACC. Those two conferences had the most schools in the tournament at seven apiece. And the ACC so strong. All seven teams in the tournament won their first round matches. And of course, they've got two teams here at the College Cup. DiMartino looking for Cheney, who was offside. Well, I tell you, DiMartino is getting a lot of touches at this point in the game. Although the possession that we've been tracking, the three consecutive passes, has now moved in UNC's favor, nine to six. But I'm telling you, when UCLA has success, it's DiMartino. She's kind of an unsung hero coming out of the midfield, making things happen. And we really saw some great vision off of that run right there. Just caught Cheney off sides. Again, that's that active back line by UNC, moving up quickly and dropping back quickly, trying to catch the other team off sides. Somebody that you're watching and somebody that Jillian Ellis is watching as well. If I may quote the co uh, coach from earlier this week, DiMartino is having a freaking unbelievable year and has just been a real force for the Bruins. And a freshman All-American last year. She was with the U.S. U-20 national team earlier this season. And with the injuries that they have had, DiMartino has been one of the strengths that has kept the rest of this team together through the adversity as she gets tripped up right there. One of the things that she does so well is off the play, she's getting herself in a very easy position to receive the ball. Again, she's thinking, it's like a chess match for her. She's always moving, always trying to get in position. And she finds herself in positions to receive the ball where she doesn't have much pressure. She kind of floats around a little bit and gets in behind. She's very sneaky. 17 points on the season and that playmaking ability demonstrated by the fact that she led the team in assists this year. Bruins trying to get back to the final for the third year in a row. Lost to Notre Dame on this field two years ago in penalty kicks, and then lost last year to Portland down in College Station, Texas, which is where we will be next year for the 2007 Women's College Cup, heading back to the Lone Star State. Texas A&M, another program that's really building a program nicely and very quickly. G. Guerrera was up twice against the UNC Tar Heels in the quarterfinal match. Nice work, Cheney, to DiMartino, saved by Harris. Once again, though, Tina DiMartino in the mix. She's working both ends of the field, but right now her focus is on offense. When she gets the ball, she's going to make things happen. She's got a couple of shots today. Also working to get Denisha Adams some more scoring opportunities here in this second half. DiMartino has even moved up when he looks to be playing almost a center forward spot right now. We're running alongside Cheney. I think with Adams still out on the sidelines getting a break, that is the case. And the North Carolina player down and obviously in a lot of pain holding that left knee. Getting set for the second semifinal, the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame gearing up for a showdown with Florida State. The Irish unbeaten with the top two scorers in the country, Michelle Weisenhofer and Carrie Hanks. And a group of seniors that were here and uh, part of that 2004 national championship team. They grew up playing together in the Chicago area and are been together for the last 10 years or so and are looking to get a second national championship. Looks like some cramping going on for Tobin Heath is the player that is uh, being helped to her feet.
We've had some rain. We've talked about the wind, but it is unseasonably humid here today in Cary, North Carolina. It has cooled down a little bit as the sun has gone down, but the temperatures today in the 70s. Tobin Heath, see her up here going up for that ball. And when she comes back down, I believe she, her calf cramped on her. You can see her immediately holding her right foot there. So Heath will sit down and that will allow Heather O'Reilly to return here for North Carolina with under 16 minutes to go. Denisha Adams continues to stay on the sideline for UCLA. Saving up that strength for the last push of regulation as O'Reilly returns for North Carolina. McCall Zerboni also comes back in for the Bruins. O'Reilly gets a foot on it, tries to play it up top. Sterling Smith, who has also re-entered, so some fresh legs for the Tar Heels. O'Reilly splitting through a couple of defenders. The shot ricochets over the end line, and O'Reilly immediately has an impact on the game as she wins the corner. This will be the eighth for UNC. As I mentioned, she leaves everything on the field, and you'll take a look here. See her just in a really good position. There she is right there. She collects up that second ball. Now she's gonna take on two defenders and splits them. First attempt cleared out, a shot from Robin Gale, handled by Val Henderson. Under 15 minutes to go. Scoreless tie in the national semis. UCLA in blue, North Carolina in white. The Tar Heels looking for a trip to the finals and a chance to win an 18th NCAA championship. The Bruins, the fifth time they've been here, and they are looking for their first. And here comes Denisha Adams back onto the field. Adams with five goals in this NCAA tournament. Martino working against Nagara. Well, this late in the match, you got to figure that it's probably going to come down to the team that doesn't make the biggest mistake in the back. We've seen fatigue set in. Tobin Heath going out with cramping. She's still getting some attention over there on the North Carolina sideline. And as you mentioned in the back, there is Heath trying to work it out. We will remind you that both teams have rookie defenders on the field right now. They've had a lot of playing time this year, but this is obviously the biggest games of their young careers. The Bruins looking for the speed of Adams, and the closest one there is Harris. Things out of play. Throw in for UCLA. Off the head of Adams. Wilmoth. Hawkins the other way for the Tar Heels. O'Reilly has it now. Try to play it up the left side. Goes all the way back to Hardy. Offside flag is up. Let's check in with Rob Simulcare. UCLA head coach Jillian Ellis is really urging her backs to start to push in and push the pace a little bit here. She wants those backs, especially when the ball is down on that North Carolina end of the field or on a throw in, to start to be a little bit more aggressive, pinch in, push in, trying to get something on the board here with uh, coming up on, well, 11 minutes and change to go here in this regulation second half. So, wants aggression. O'Reilly. Off the crossbar on the side of the goal. Goal kick for UCLA. The Bruins have not beaten North Carolina at this College Cup. They're 0-2. They lost in the 2000 championship match. 
and they lost to North Carolina in the semis here in 2003 as the Tar Heels blasted through the competition, outscoring their opponents 32 to nothing en route to an undefeated national championship and arguably one of the best college teams in history. Adams with DiMartino. Eleven minutes to go for a spot in the final. Bruins were offside once again. Restart coming for North Carolina. Sorry, Beth. Cheney's getting a little bit lazy up there. Maybe some fatigue is setting in for her as well. Last two offside calls against her, and she's just in a position where she's not even really very involved in the play, but just kind of hanging out offside. She's got to keep her head on a swivel, look around, see where their defenders are. Eight offsides flags against UCLA, none against Carolina here today. Boney out to Cheney and again offsides. Well, in critiquing the play of Robin Gale, number 11 for UNC in the back, I think she's done a great, great job stepping in for Jess Maxwell with the broken leg that she suffered in the quarterfinals. What we're seeing is a very active back line by UNC. They're dropping quickly and they're pushing up quickly. And the last three times, Cheney's been called offsides. Under 10 minutes to go. Gale will take this kick. Launches it up front. Bruins clear it out to midfield. Gale heads it back the other way. Averbush whistled for the shove. Lindstrom. Well, as Rob mentioned in his last report, we are seeing UCLA compact the field more. They're pushing their four defenders up at times over the mid stripe. O'Reilly. Heather O'Reilly to midfield. In the space for Engen and too much pace on it. Not the touch that the Tar Heels were looking for there. Beth, my comment about the, uh, might come down to which team doesn't make the big mistake, really plays into my last comment about the way the back lines are playing so aggressively. DiMartino with three defenders on him, taken away by Nagara. Wilmoth gets to that one in the air. It's Ganell to Zerboni. Zerboni taken down. Play on, says Rachel Wu. Throw in for the Tar Heels. Under eight minutes to go in regulation. Davis over the top for Adams and Ashlyn Davis will have to come out of the area to clear it out as Cheney was lurking as well. Tar Heels, O'Reilly looking for a burst. Calvert is there to deny it. Lindstrom couldn't get there in time as Ashlyn Davis is out. We've got it less than seven minutes now to go in the semis. Harris got there first and now she'll boot it out. Sterling Smith to Averbush. Switches fields. Nagara, Carolina building. Nagara 
with a big right foot, and it goes in for the goal! Nagara from long range! And the Tar Heels score with under seven minutes to go to take the lead, and it's a freshman that delivers. From right here in Raleigh, North Carolina, Anderson can't believe it. Well, we've been talking about possession all game long and how important the change of point is. Check out Aver pushing this long serve over here. That's a beautiful 40-yard serve. And we talked about the power that the young freshman, Casey Naguerre, gets on her shot. And this is the only thing. Oh, man, that ball was dancing. This is the only thing that has gotten by Val Henderson. Wow, did that have some movement on it. The Tar Heels score with 6.17 to play on the knuckleball from Nagara. Her third goal of the season. We've seen so many times in matches, the next five minutes after a goal is where the team that has scored is most vulnerable. UCLA is going to be pushing hard to get a goal in these next five minutes. O'Reilly trying to rush through. Yael Averbush. Instead of playing it down the right side, spun and switched it over to the left for Nagara, who launched it from long range for the goal. O'Reilly runs on. She's got Averbush in front. O'Reilly with a nice move. Corner kick, North Carolina. And they will take their time as we approach five minutes to go. Ninth corner of the match. And as Anson Dorrance starts pacing over there on the sideline. Punched out by Henderson. Eveland tries to put it back in for O'Reilly, who settles. Ava Bush. Under four and a half to go. North Carolina continues to bring the heat. Guess lets it go through. O'Reilly, far side, and a goal! <laughs> Heather O'Reilly makes it 2-0 Carolina with her 11th tally of the season. Well, the team that figured out the change of point, in my opinion, was the team that was going to win this game. And the player we've been talking about is the Ayala Averbush. Again, a long change of point to Heather O'Reilly, who was so composed and just has a beautiful inside of the right foot finish to beat Val Henderson. Again, Yael Averbush, MVP in my opinion. She has figured it out by changing the point of the attack. And we're not talking about 20 yard passes, we're talking about 40 and 45 yard passes. And that has led to the goals by a freshman and by the senior All-American. Late in the second half, over the top. Last year, a frustrating loss to Florida State in the quarterfinals with what Anson Dorrance has called perhaps one of his best teams ever, but they did not make it to this College Cup. And now this year, everybody's starting to talk about parity, and this would be the opportunity to get the Tar Heels when they're gonna have their youngest team ever. And now three minutes and 13 seconds away from saying, uh-uh, the Tar Heels are not going away, and they could be back in the national championship final. Well, the only way that you could have written this script, script and nobody was writing this script, was to have an idea of the impact of the freshman class. And we've talked a lot about them today, five of them typically starting. And who would have said that Casey Nagara might end up with a game-winning goal? A freshman who really has, hasn't started all year and has come in with valuable minutes. And this is the most she's played in any game this season. 
Her father, a former goalkeeper in the professional leagues. And uh, the Carolina defense now looks like they're going to play with. They got four players continuing to push forward to put the pressure on. They're bringing, gonna bring in another substitution here. I think we heard Anson Dorrance say play right midfield as she will come on for Washington. The dominance of North Carolina looking for an 18th NCAA championship. Valiant effort today by Nikki Washington who goes out playing through the pain of the, the shin splints today. All the right moves by Carolina. And I think Wendy, we really have to go back to what they had talked about doing all week, making the change in goal at halftime. And the two big plays that Ashlyn Harris made on Denisha Adams, one of them coming all the way out of her area to beat Adams to a ball in space, and then the save 1v1 against Denisha a few minutes later. Well, she she definitely provided a very solid foundation in the back and made those two key saves, and it would have been 2-0 UCLA. You're right, Beth. So just a critical sub. She comes in with so much confidence, played a great second half. And then the decision by Averbush to just simply switch fields and make the long pass to create some space for her teammate on the other side of the defense that led to both those goals. Well, she's been under so much pressure all game. They respect her so much. And a lot of times there's two players on her, sometimes a third one coming over and trying to limit her touches on the ball. But that means that one or two teammates are open, and typically it's on the far side. That's where UCLA was bringing the player from. So again, 45-yard change of the point made the difference in the game. Nagara, who had the first goal, takes the corner. And a goal kick coming up here for North Carolina. She scored with 6.17 to go, and then a couple of minutes later, Heather O'Reilly scoring in the 86th minute. Aver Bush assisting on both goals, and we've got under a minute to play now. And it's looking good that North Carolina will advance to the national championship out of this first semifinal and deny UCLA in their fifth trip to this College Cup, their first ever national championship. Two players that factored into UNC's second goal, both finalists for the Mac Herman Player of the Year Award. We will see the third finalist in our second semifinal. Kerry Hanks, the sophomore from Notre Dame. They will take on Florida State. Well, we've seen it all day long. The offside flag, I thought was up. And then Rachel Wu says, play on. As the final seconds tick away, the University of North Carolina advances to the national championship match with a 2 nothing win over UCLA here in the semifinals with two late goals coming in the 84th minute from Casey Nagara and the 86th minute from Heather O'Reilly. And the Tar Heels stay alive in their efforts to win an 18th NCAA championship. Back with head coach Anson Dorrance for his thoughts when we return to the College Cup. Casey Nagara and Heather O'Reilly score in the final 10 minutes as North Carolina beats UCLA two to nothing. The Tar Heels will move on to play for the national championship. And Rap Simulcare is standing by with a couple of guests. All right, Beth, a very happy head coach and star forward. First, uh, Coach Dorrance, 85 scoreless minutes there. Then you guys break through for two. What turned the tide? Well, Casey Nagara just hits the ball so hard, and her strike, uh, you know, we've seen her hit those balls in practice. I mean, it's amazing how hard she can hit a ball, but that one not only was hard, it was extraordinarily accurate. So that put us in a position where we are up one. I was just telling Heather, uh, 
I love the way she played in the second half. She was relentless defensively and offensively, creating chances for herself and teammates, and then she finished a beauty for the separation. And in a year where you guys have relied so much on freshmen, you get a game-winning goal from a freshman, a sophomore with two assists, and then, of course, your star senior gets the second goal. How does that typify your season? Well, you know, we've relied on that uh, class that we brought in. I mean, that's a super class, but let's face it, uh, what's critical for us this year is what uh, kids like he uh, Heather have done for us and Libby Guess and our senior class. Uh, uh, they embrace the freshmen, and the freshmen embrace them back, and now we're in the final. All right, and Heather, to you now. After missing the College Cup for two years, after winning that national championship your freshman year, what's it mean for you to perform this way to get a goal and get back to the national championship game? It's a thrill. I'm just glad Casey, like Anson said, put us on the board, and uh, it was nice to get that, uh, that securing second goal there. But uh, I'm excited, and I think this team has worked hard, and we deserve it. All right, guys, thank you both. We'll see you Sunday. Beth, back to you. Thank you very much, Rob. I got to get Heather O'Reilly in North Carolina moving on to play for the national championship. The second semifinal coming up from SAS Soccer Park with the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame taking on Florida State. That'll be at about 6 Eastern on ESPN2. 2, Two nothing the final in our first semi. North Carolina, a winner over UCLA.